Hello everyone, this is Aviator737 with his first Orbiter Spaceflight Simulator video on YouTube. So, what actually inspired me to to learn and, and to play this uh, simulator, this advanced uh, space simulator? Well, I watched some David Courtney videos on YouTube and he has been a great inspiration to me. I've seen very many of his videos and uh, definitely the absolute beginner guide because it is very very useful to people who are brand new to Orbiter. installed and working So hello guys, so let's get into the Orbiter 2016 Space Flight Simulator. So this, these are all the, the folders that comes with the default game. So let's go into the Quick Start Scenario folder and press the Quick Start Scenario. And this will land us in our uh, Delta Glider, standard Delta Glider, which is a virtual aircraft and is pretty unrealistic because um, it can take uh, damage and you can't fail with the, the landing gear and such and it can't burn up in the atmosphere but it is a great starter too okay we'll terminate the uh, slide up using fest at uh, 2145 and then we'll go back to prior alpha thanks 2245 but yeah guys that was a big thanks to david Courtney for teaching me to 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 play this simulator so, if you open up the Orbiter 2016 Space Flight Simulator, it should look something like this. So you have all your standard um, folder that folders that comes with the with the, the simulator, and let's just go into the checklist scenario folder and press Quick Start. This will uh, set us in a standard Delta Glider, which is a fictional aircraft. And uh, it's uh, mainly mainly used as uh, a beginner's tool because it's um, it doesn't have uh, it doesn't it can't uh, take uh, any damage and it won't uh, damage the landing gear or anything. So this vessel is actually pretty unrealistic, but but it's really good for for beginners. So so this is the Delta Glider that we are using today. So we are going to orbit. And we're not going to do anything crazy yet. We, we need to, to learn the basics first. So this is our vessel. We are at Cape Canaveral and we are going to take off and just not, not catch up with the ISS or duck with it or anything. Just going to, to, to get into orbit. So let's press the F8 to get the, the special MFD displays up. And then you have all of these functions. If you press select, you get the orbit MFD and this is what the orbit MFD looks like. So you have projection, you need to set that to ship, so it is going after your ship, uh, you mean, I know, uh, you know, uh, on the top of the surface of the earth. And we can just power down this MFD because we, we aren't going to, to use any MFDs. So, so what we're going to do is just let's just take off and um, get straight forward. So press the plus key and hold control and release it, and then it should go by itself. So once you get about uh, to 180 knots, you should uh, pull the nose up and 
then we are off the ground and then we are going to press G to to pull up the landing gear. So let's lift our nose and G to raise the landing gear and we are flying off the ground. So what we are going to do now is that we are going to raise the nose about 50 degrees. We are not going to turn. You are going to, need to, to use the uh, numpad keys to to uh, uh, to control it. Above, you don't uh, have to do uh, any of this. Just set it to off. You don't need rotation or linear thrusters. Definitely not linear thrusters by now. But you can control if you want your nose to go up or down with the two and eight keys on the numpad. And then you can rotate the ship by pressing four and six on normal keypad. So just keep a steep uh, angle of attack. Just keep a steep uh, just keep your nose up steep at about fifty degrees. Okay, we were just wondering that. Here's auto on the tip. And then after a little while you can just let go of of it resisting to come back down. Then you want to go at about 30. So we are looking at this orbit MFD. And then we can just add a little 2 and 8 to get it to around 30 degrees uh, of nose up. So in, in order to get to orbit, this is our altitude in kilometers and this is our speed. So what we need to do is that to get a stable orbit, it doesn't really matter in, in some kind of precautious way, it doesn't really matter okay, uh, your altitude if it's, if it's 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers, it doesn't really matter because it's the speed that sets you in a good orbit and to get in orbit you need a speed of about 7500 so this is the orbit MFD and it should overlap this gray thing which is the earth when we are about to, uh, getting to orbit so just pull up on the nose to get it about Thirty degrees. And as you can see we are getting to about fifty ki kilometers of altitude. So we can just let go of uh, the nose up, you know the, the two on the numerical keypad, and let's just gain some speed before we go any higher up in the atmosphere. So this is our vessel. We are way on our way to, to orbit. So let's just get some speed into it when we're about, yeah, I don't know, but let's just go ahead and get some speed gain some more speed before we actually uh, rotation do some more uh, before we actually start to get up higher in the atmosphere hey so we see our targets uh, we have a go for GPS incorporation okay we'll load We are actually falling down the atmosphere, so let's just go ahead and push the nose up to gain some altitude. This is our velocity vector, this cross here, which means that this is the, the direction of the velocity with, that we are going. So even though our nose uh, is here, we are actually still going this way because of the velocity.
like that attitude. So you just switch in, over to a rotation me. now so that we can okay, get this up again the because your call. we are actually getting low into the atmosphere again, which is not good. So yeah, when you get about 50 kilometers, you just want to press the rotation to to uh, push the nose up because you need that. Because up here in the sky, there's no there's no um, there's no air, there's no uh, wind resistance to 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 use this. So we need to use the rotational thrusters which are controlled by by a small um, small bursts of uh, gas which are which are controlling the vessel's rotation and and uh, orientation and all that so let's just keep it at this altitude right now Just back off on the, the altitude. Let's gain some more speed before we go any further up in the atmosphere. Let's just know that the, the, the nose a little because we are actually going pretty high now but it doesn't really matter how high you get because we're not going to target any um, any uh, celestial bodies or um, or the ISS or some some uh, some targets uh, up, up the sky so let's just gain some more velocity before we go up any further in altitude and this takes practice guys this takes practice It actually takes a lot of time to, to get used to this because I, I definitely think that the trickiest part of doing anything in orbiter is to get through the atmosphere and up into a stable orbit. The orbital maneuvers are pretty easy compared to, right to, to, to taking yeah, off. Thank you. So let's just pull the nose up until this velocity vector goes okay, above 1222 to 1223 the middle time frame. and now as you can see on um, the orbit MFD the orbit MFD the, the the circle is becoming more circular which is a very good sign on our orbit so we need to get a little bit higher up in the atmosphere now we are gaining more velocity so let's just pull the nose up out. again uh, and this is really just trial a, and error you uh, need to test this for yourself to to really do anything I can't really say you have to do this you have to do this because it's really really realistic and advanced uh, physics so it can't just be the same all the time you need to test in different scenarios what it's going to do But as you can see here on the orbit MFD, we are, you know, this this gray circle is the surface of um, the surface of the Earth, and this green circle is our orbit around the Earth. And as you can see, we're not over, we have not overlapped the Earth yet, which means that we are not in a stable orbit. So let's just lower the nose again. So when do you want to let go of your full thrust on the main engines? Well, you want to let go of the full thrust when 
just basically when this green orbit of your ship is overlapping you, the the surface of the Earth, which is the gray, the gray here. So this orbit is uh, really really cir circular right now, but we need to Eastern the LDRIQ card to get it to overlap. Check in, uh, for sync config. Copy. It's just um, raise up the, 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 the altitude again. And this is just for beginners, so we're actually just going to see when this is overlapping the surface of the earth. So let's go off uh, the nose angle pitch. And we are almost in a circular orbit. We are almost in a stable orbit around the earth. Yeah, 12 and 13. And it is beginning to overlap a bit. So now it's about overlapped. And we can go ahead and kill the main engine of thrust. So if you press the DST button, you will get you will get the PEA and the APA, and basically what this means is that the PEA um, is the lowest point of our orbit, and that's minus 22 kilometers, which is not really good because this means that we are here, and when we coast around and come to the periapsis, which is this this circle filled with green and cyan. That means that we are going to crash into the Earth, the surface of the Earth. So, before we mo move on to the next video, I just want to show you how to circularize the orbit, or just the principles of it. So we have the periapsis, which is the green dot right here, and we have the apoapsis right here, which is the green dot right here, and the periapsis is the, the lowest point of our orbit, and the apoapsis is the highest point of the orbit. So to circularize we want to come to either the periapsis or the apoapsis. So let's take an example. Our orbit is not stable and we are going from where the green line is very close to the periapsis on this picture and let's coast around to the apoapsis on the opposite side. And then we have to for example, let's say we have to, to lower the orbit in order to, to make it uh, perfectly circular. You can see that uh, in the eccentricity, because you have to get it to as close to zero as possible. So let's say we want to lower the orbit, then we have to turn retrograde at the apoapsis and fire our main engines. So we break our velocity and therefore lower our orbit. But if we want to increase it, we have to turn prograde, which is the way we're going around the orbit, which means that we are gaining more velocity, which means we're getting, we're raising the orbit. So that's how to raise the orbit. And that's just um, exactly the same thing uh, if you want to raise the apoapsis or lower the apoapsis. Um, in order to circularize your orbit. So that's just the uh, principles of it. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped you get uh, into orbit. And this is just the basics of uh, going to going into an orbit in Orbiter, which is Orbit is all about before I can do anything else. So thanks for watching. And this last bit, got removed by some reason, but um, I will follow up in the next video. Thanks guys.